Hello everyone, uh, welcome to my studio and to the Monday streaming. Uh, I'm really happy to see you there. And today we will make a small trip, uh, mostly in my memory. Um, the, the things is, just a couple of weeks ago I was on the festival in Vietnam and thanks to the uh, Mindan Dan organi organizer of the brilliant event uh, we have a chance to discover the country. So we may not just the festival, we make a trip around the Hanoi to see the beautiful places. And one of that place uh, was really unusual. Uh, I can show you the small video how it was look like. And I believe you know that place. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you can see the name of the place in the description of that streaming. But uh, normally, if you tape the, that place in the Google and see the pictures, it will be like a bright sunny day, it's beautiful, very nice. We was very lucky. We was in that place in the mist. And you know, it's like, uh, it was feeling like you are inside the movie. It was unusual and beautiful. You will see that, look, it's just a lot of islands in the mist, the beautiful reflection. So that was incredible time, incredible picture, and we really enjoyed that trip at like around three hours by boat uh, near the islands like that. So this is amazing. And that will be my subject for today. And you see that the mist. Uh, honestly, uh, on my workshops we are talking about the different weather conditions uh, for the landscapes times to times and uh, it's uh, all the time a lot of surprises because mostly people do not understand why we see the picture like that. For sure we can copy that. Yeah, we can pick up the same colors, uh, we can copy uh, the picture, but it's not right idea if we just follow the vision without understanding why it's look like that. What's the difference uh, between the mist, for instance, and sunny day? So it's not that simple uh, as you think. And that's why sometimes on the workshops, uh, if it's like a long-term workshop, we have a couple of days, uh, I'm always spent one or two days to talking about the how to represent uh, the different weather condition in your landscapes. And you know, sometimes, sometimes, then you see the reference photo and see the uh, brightly sunny day and it's look like a cheap postcard, you know. Sometimes you can make a decision and make the same place in the rain or may make the same place in the mist. But for that you have to analyze why the picture is changed uh, in the weather conditions. So, one of the workshops like that uh, will be this year uh, in the Madeline Island in the United States and we will be five days uh, on the plein air and in the studio and one day we will talk about the different weather and it will be a very very interesting game. Uh, if I'm right uh, I still have a few spots uh, there so if you want you can join me it will be really really interesting. And by the way um, during this uh, live streaming, if you have any questions, you can just tape it. Uh, I have a technical support. I can hear your questions and answer anytime. So because of that, we can talk. Okay, good. And uh, because we have a really special weather condition, uh, I use not the regular paper what I'm used for my painting normally. So this time it's a Sanders Waterford cold press it. It's much better for the mist. Uh, very limited numbers of colors. The size of my paper is 15 by 18 inches. Uh, the colors what we'll uh, use for that, uh, I just want to remind you the, uh, how it's look like. You. So it's not really colorful. It's one of the things about the mist. In the mist, the colors so that means it doesn't matter uh, what the color, uh, real color of the rocks, of the trees, of the water. It's always in the gray mixes, and that's my the game very interesting. So uh, I will use uh, cobalt blue, indigo, green sienna, maybe a little bit green violet, and tallow green, blue shade. The 
So uh, you can see this is our reference photo and this is my paper. My paper wet inside, it's ready. And now I'm wetted outside on top, but not everywhere. Uh, I leave the space for the board, the white clear paper. And you know, I, I don't want to uh, use the, um, the sketch for that. So we're gonna make it uh, directly. As I say, I wet the, the paper everywhere except the board. Hello, Florida. Hello, South Africa. Wow. People around the world. That's great. So, guys, you are living in the different part of the planet, and today you have a chance to go into the Vietnam. Beautiful country. Hello, Germany. So you see, I wet everything except uh, this small space for my board. And honestly, it is, this is my sketch. That's it, I don't have to do more. And let's go. Idea is to produce the different gray colors. Complicated, but everything should be grayish. Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. You know, we are going to France just in the couple of days. It will be a big trip. Hello, Korea. So you see for now I just preparing the background and I continue to do this later uh, we add the different spots there hello Switzerland and uh, interesting game I need a white only for my board but if you look at the picture here uh, on the center we have a bright light as well so i i want to keep it hello carolina Hello, California. So uh, to make the grayish mix for my, uh, let's say rocks and the islands here, I'm starting to use the Queen Sienna uh, with the indigo greenish mixes. It still have to be gray, but this time a little bit more brownish. And let's check how it will be look like. And that's the reason why I took this time cold pressed paper instead of my favorite rough because the gradients are more softly there and I'm really like how it's look like. We paint in wet and wet but you see I'm trying to control um, the shapes that's why I slowly build the islands. <laughs> thank you for your message from Bali thank you you know it's uh, for me it's always pleasure to start a week uh, with a, that live streaming uh, and to talk with you guys it's great start really
Hello India. So the idea to create really soft gradients everywhere except some accents. Okay. Yes, uh, sorry about the sound on the uh, video. Uh, okay. The colors. Uh, I use the limited numbers of colors. Uh, this is the uh, here. Uh, Queen of on Sienna. That's what I use for the brownish mixes. I use Indigo, Cobalt Blue, and Phthalo Green Blue shade. Maybe a little bit pure and violet if I think it will be nice, but not sure still. And just in the end, for the boat, I will use a little bit alizarin crimson. You can find the list of the of the colors in the chat. You know the Sanders water fort uh, hold the paper for the long time and it's really comfortable to create all that mystery blend in here and build the islands. That's interesting game, always. And remember, we not just uh, put the pigments, we sometimes washing out and lift the pigments, like here, to make some lights inside. And for all the people who now on, on the Instagram, welcome to my YouTube channel. You can see the uh, live streaming right now in real time. Join me. So we add some details in the island. We're back to that part later. Now I'm starting to build that shape. And we're back to the reflection again in the uh, couple of minutes. Uh, because you know that uh, I have a soft angle, like about uh, three degrees. Uh, and that's why the water moving in that direction. So I can back to that part and that still will be ready. As I say, we don't make a sketch uh, by pencil, but you know, it's not necessary for this time. It's pretty simple objects there. And remember, if you have any questions, please ask me. I can talk and paint in the same moment. Just by paper towel, I stop water somewhere to build the shape more visible. You know, it was a really interesting trip in Vietnam. It was a, uh, on this boat was a lot of great artists together. So we enjoyed that view and took a tons of photos. And I'm starting to build a negative space around my boat. Uh, 
I got the question in the chat. What do you mean uh, that effect? Uh, what kind of effect do you mean? I'm not sure what I understand. So uh, idea is I trying to keep uh, all the surface of my paper on the same level of water. Uh, and that's why it's not moving uh, in the older direction. So it's uh, more easy to control. <laughs> yeah, thank you for the question about the brush. You know, uh, we're talking about that very specific brushes all the time. Uh, you will find uh, information about my brushes on the same YouTube channel. Uh, we run this special video to explain what kind of brushes is that and why I'm using them. Um, I believe you will find the, the link in our chat soon. And my advice, just watch the video. It's the best solution because, uh, you know, it's... We're talking about that many, many times and uh, mostly the people already know that brushes, it's it's magical brush, believe me. That's a really cool brush. So I'm starting to care about the reflections slowly. Because the reflection here is the one of the most interesting part of the picture, for sure. And we make the... It's not the horizon line, uh, but it's just a visible part of water, let's say. And you see, by the way, uh, that brush, I can build the shape of the brush. It's, it's a big one, but look how sharp is that. So that's why I can do the very tiny lines like this. And it's easy to do. And thank you for the question why I wet the back side of my paper. You know, the reason is very simple. You see how much time I spend to make that soft gradients. Uh, because my paper don't have air inside in the fibers, between fibers in my paper, just the water. I have a lot of time to play with my pigments. That's make the process comfortable. If I'm not the wet the back side, it's drying much faster. So I don't have a chance to make all that nice gradients everywhere. And for all the people who are now on the Facebook, you can go to the YouTube channel. In the real time, you can see that broadcasting it happens right now. Join me. So, and yeah, answering on your question, yes. Uh, if I'm planning to paint, uh, they make the painting longer than the 15 minutes, I'm always wet the backside. It's just very comfortable process after that. You see, even this area is still wet and I can back to that and change the pigments colors. It's really, really comfortable. Karen, Karen, thank you very much for your kind words. I really appreciate it. Yeah, that's the point. You know, uh, all the materials what you can find on my website, that's the same materials what I'm using myself. So uh, instead of like what all, all the companies doing, they create something uh, because they think it's good and they sell it. But I create the materials for me. So I know what I'm looking for. And that's things made for artists by artist, and that's the difference.
Yes, thank you for the question. Yeah, I, I took the full-time education, uh, art education in Russia. And as you maybe know, in Russia, the education is very strong. It's almost like a ballet, you know, <laughs> the same thing. So yes, I have a, I have an art education. Uh, college, uh, academy, uh, special courses, so yep, full. Okay, and thank you for the question about uh, equipment, my board. So, the board, what I have here on my table, is uh, that it's a PVC plastic board, uh, uh, five millimeters. Uh, not heavy, it's really light, but it's very strong. And I like the matte black colors here, so I never see the dirt and the colors there is just the black, it's like a matte. It's nice thing. And uh, this is my tape. So it's made special for watercolor. Because that tape, uh, first of all, you see, it's like a frame it. You see just your paper, which is good. And plus, you never, you never see the dirt here. And it's very strong tape. So then it's a really wet paper starting to dry. That tape still hold the, the paper. And so we make the recipe of the glue special for watercolor and tested that many times before we, we created like a mass production for the prototype it takes a lot of time to create it so we have a uh, 66 people if you don't mind please give a like to our video because that helps to other people to find it. Thank you for that. And the trick what I'm really like for the reflection here is that one, wash out. Uh, thank you for the brilliant question. Uh, you know, uh, the reference is just a reference. It's not the idea to copy that photo, for sure. I'm trying to uh, make my feeling about that place, but not to copy the photo. That's why I don't have to follow that. I can change it and make my personal things inside. So the reference photo, just point for inspiration, nothing more. Hello Argentina. So I'm back to that part of island and starting to make some reflection on that side. Following the same idea, but this time I have to paint around my boat. Uh, Robin, thank you very much for your kind words. Yeah, I'm really happy about that workshops, what we run on the Sketching Academy, special because it's a, a very limited numbers of people, so we can talk and it's always a pleasure. And thank you for your kind words. By the way, uh, then we run the video on Monday. We always... Uh, announce the new events, uh, workshops, demos, a lot of things. So if you don't want to miss it, uh, please subscribe on the channel. In that case, you always will know what will be. And never miss the interesting things.
so time to create the board and uh, for that I switch to the different brush uh, or to the calligraphy brush and uh, that's another one interesting thing so I don't want to uh, for, for, for first of all I don't want to copy that board I just need something which helped me to make the composition better and um, there is no sketch so we're gonna paint that directly that's an interesting game again Okay, thank you for the question about the brushes. So normally, uh, you exactly can find my set f with the five brushes on my website. So this is my main tools. Five lines, flat, three lines, small calligraphy brush, biggest calligraphy brush. Uh, sometimes it's the uh, wood color, sometimes it's black. I prefer the black one. And the pointy liner, this one. Plus, for the some specific job and the details, I use the Escoda uh, brushes. I like the company and the brilliant quality of the brushes. So I use Escoda Kronos and sometimes Escoda Mob brushes. But normally, this is my main set. And thank you for question. Then we was on that place, you know, it was a very mystery uh, things. We just see the islands, islands, and at one moment from the mist, some boats coming like this one. And it's really look like a ghost. And a few minutes you can see all the details, but before it's just some silhouette, really, really nice thing. Uh, I got the uh, question about uh, <laughs> study my technique. Thank you for that. But you should know, uh, yeah, you see that we run uh, the video each Monday. So it's more than 200 videos uh, on the YouTube channel, but nothing compared to real workshops. Uh, believe me, it's a huge difference. Then you're going uh, to the workshops in person and uh, we can talk and explain you the uh, idea. And you see uh, not just by the screen you see in real what i'm doing with my brush because a lot of things you couldn't see for instance in my uh, left hand i'm always have a paper towel so you don't see how i'm touching that because i couldn't make it on front of my painting i just destroyed it so that process invisible for you and a lot of things you can see just in real workshops so my advice if you have a chance uh, go to the website watercolonline.com uh, click the workshops you will see the old workshops what i hold in this year and try to find someone which fits for you in time and the place and the that's the best solution yeah and in the chat you will find a link Uh, thank you for the question how how much water I have to apply in my paper you know that's really hard to say how we can measure that uh, it's just more about the feeling so my paper wet but not shiny so it's not like a lake 
uh, and it's very important to keep the same level of water everywhere no one part more wet no one part more dry so it's the balance Uh, yeah, thank you for the question about the Australia workshops. Yes, uh, I'm planning to be there in, uh, in Australia in September and October uh, 2025. It's still not in my schedule because we not decide which date it will be, but it's in the plan. Yeah, just uh, times to times check the, uh, the website uh, as soon I will get the exact dates uh, we'll put these on the website as well uh no <laughs> sorry the, yeah thank you for the question the, this year no uh, the, uh, there is no plans to go to the philadelphia unfortunately uh, but who knows what will be in the future yeah, for sure uh, i will but not sure which time date so it still will be adjusted yeah uh, for sure yes thank you for for the question about the workshop look uh, and just imagine what is the workshop like if we go on some for instance, uh, we still have, a, for example, the places in uh, Switzerland. Uh, it's a four days in the studio, six hours in the day, and it's not the demo. So we paint in step by step, and I talk with the students and explain personally uh, how to improve the the skill and what's the wrong, what's the mistakes. So that's it's a huge difference compared to the that demo what i'm doing here what i can do i here i can just show something but there is no chance to explain and definitely i couldn't give you the personal advice so that's the incredible big difference between the the demos and the workshops that's just a demo it's not a workshop at all so there is no personal uh, communication for each one i couldn't uh, make your fix your mistakes I couldn't explain your mistakes and that's the big difference so the personal workshops it's the personal workshops nothing to compare it's not just a i show something we're working together six hours in the day so that's the big job Thank you for the question about the Girona. Uh, it's in my schedule, but uh, exactly that workshop, uh, the better to check the information on the Angela Barbie workshop, Enjoy Painting Catalonia. Uh, so we decide the dates, but it depends if you will find that information on her website. Um, it will be yes. If not, uh, uh, it's not like a fresh information about that workshop in my hands unfortunately but it's just about this all other workshop you can go to the website you will find it a lot of them already sold some of them still have a places uh, so just check the links uh, you can go to the links right from my website and check the links if uh, you will find information this spot still available so that means it's still available No, I, I'm not going to India in this year and 2025. Nope, because you know this this year, for instance, it's a full. It's a 22 countries, 46 workshops. It's too much, honestly, more than I can do. And next year it will be a little bit less, but still uh, uh, a lot of workshops. 
So we'll see what will be in 2026. Ah, that's great question about inspiration artists. You know, I couldn't tell you just one name. I can tell you 10 names. It's all my friends what we meet all the time on the festivals, uh, some events, uh, we're learning from each other and they're all my friends inspiring me very much. So I couldn't tell you just one name. Unfortunately, that's impossible. So we have uh, uh, now a lot of people watching me. Uh, thank you very much for that. And if you don't mind, please give us a like, because as I say, that helps other people to find that video and make it visible. So now we go into the uh, another one interesting game. I'm starting to add the details for this, but before I have to make it dry a little bit to make after that the tiny lines and add the contrast. And sorry, I turn off sound because it will be very noisy as usual. So I switch to the pointy brush now uh, to make the details. Uh, I got the question, what do you mean to make workshops? <laughs> uh, you mean without, without me? So what's the reason? Uh, you, you know, for me, uh, Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I will explain what does it mean for me the workshops. First of all, uh, I'm not just teaching; I'm learning as well, and I never stop uh, learning on my workshops because the uh, the students ask me the questions uh, all the time, and sometimes it's very interesting question, and I have to find a way how to uh, answer on that. And because of that, I'm starting to understand something. So. Um, as I say, I'm learning as well. So for me, it's very important uh, part of my life. So that's why uh, I want to make in person. And plus, uh, I really enjoy the personal uh, communication with the people. It's always interesting. The people coming from around the world, they're interesting. They're artists as well. And it's always a huge pleasure. So no, 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 no. I want to make it just myself. Always. Yeah, I got the question about the hair dryer. Uh, you see, it, I make it again, watercolorline.com. It's made special for watercolor with a lamp to see the reflection of the water, how wet my, my paper. And it's a uh, very strong construction because it's made for the plein air because it's, it's a metal. So it's pretty strong guy because I drop it many times on the plein air on the ground. And for the plein air, it's the great solution. You can find the link uh, on that 
hair dryer in the chat. <laughs> Thank you for the question. You know, uh, then before I start to make the project, I'm thinking. I build the plan in my mind. I'm, I'm thinking about what I should do. Uh, the first step, the second step. But then the process is started. It's like a dancing. You don't have to think anymore. You have to just fall in your feeling and emotions and organize your paper all the time. So no, in that moment, I'm not thinking at all. That, that's why, you know, I can talk and paint because it's more a life process. Yes, uh, great question. My paper is still wet uh, and because it's a good quality paper, that paper will be wet uh, at least 40 minutes more. Uh, I can show you, by the way, uh, inside, you will see, it still will be a lot of water. You see, uh, it, it's just, the water is everywhere. So inside my paper is still very wet. Uh, it's just the, on the top, the fibers is stable and the pigments connected to the fibers and not everywhere. So if I um, start to uh, add another one layer now, I will destroy the, uh, these layers. So it, if I want to apply the layer number two, I have to dry it uh, more carefully. Thank you very much for your kind words. So we're almost done with that. We just add a little bit more accents. And for sure, I really want to make reflection from these things here. It's look nice. Uh, brilliant question. If you just start in your trip in watercolor, uh, believe me, there is no way to save money <laughs> on the materials uh, or on the paper. Uh, my advice, just uh, for the new year, for the for the Christmas or for your birthday, just make the gift for yourself, like a 100 piece of full size paper and start to paint. And don't think what you spent uh, one sheet more one more you lost another one we exchange that to experience it's a very practical uh, job so you have to uh, paint again and again and again and again and for this you need a good quality paper and we spent a lot of materials and you know i'm painting every day and just imagine every day one sheet of paper is gone so that's the rules yeah, you need a lot of paper. That's true. And by the way, another one thing uh, about the starting to study the watercolor. Uh, don't make that mistake. I'm hearing that all the time. People thinking, okay, am I just a beginner? I don't want to use the expensive professional materials. Uh, I will use something cheap. Then I'm going to be a master. I switch to the professional paper or professional paint. That's the big mistake. It doesn't work uh, for the watercolor. It can be like this for acrylic. Yep. Except for oil, except some very specific techniques, but not for the watercolor. 
it's just one medium on the planet whereas all the materials going inside each other and the quality of the materials it change everything so if you know it's it's very simple rules if you want to have a good steak take the best meat there is no way to make a good steak from the cheap meat so you need a good quality materials from the beginning if you want to make something nice So we done with that. We finish it. I know my paper it's still wet here. That's why all the colors pretty bright. But in the couple of minutes, like a 15 minutes it will dry and the colors will be more softly more close to the original photo so for now it's still bright colors uh, because there's still a lot of them like here special all that area they're still on top then the paper going to dry a lot of them going inside the paper pretty deep and we lost a lot of pigments so Thank you for your time. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that trip to Vietnam with me uh, because I really, I really enjoyed to back in my memory to that place. It's just a magic, you know, it's like exactly like you was in the movie, something like a Lord of Rings, something like that. So that was really cool. And unfortunately, um, in the couple of the month in front of us there is no live streaming because uh, i'm starting my trips to europe to the workshops uh, as i say it's a lot of workshops around the the world in the different countries so uh i don't remember which month i back to the live streaming but i believe it will be in the middle of the summer something like that but uh you have a chance to join to my leave workshops live workshops in the different countries and believe me it's a huge difference between the demo and the personal meeting so i can share more information and show you more things like even for this demo still uh, i didn't tell you about the rules uh, how to uh, paint the the mist we just follow in the picture yes but imagine any subject any street view any landscape can be represented in the mist for that you have to know what you have to change in your color mixing to represent the mist, the mist, the real mist. Uh, how to explain the distance and the space because landscape it's always a lot of space. So it's a lot of interesting tricks which help you to understand why the subject look like that. Because all what we're doing is just an explanation. Before to explain something, we have to understand that. So that's a really interesting game always. Again, thank you very much for your time. Still, stay healthy and see you in the live streaming in the uh, middle of the summer. But anyway, each Monday you will find a new recording video on my YouTube channel. Thank you and see you next time.